Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Andrew's Life. Uh, basically, what I'm going to be discussing on this particular video is the fact that everybody should be prepared to be a nomad. Just like the title suggests. Now, first of all, I have made a couple of videos discussing all the benefits of becoming a nomad. And I've even made a video talking about some of the disadvantages of, live, of being a nomad. Now, on, honestly, I think becoming a nomad has more advantages than disadvantages. Especially if you're wanting to do it part time. I mean, there's people, there's plenty of people that do it full time. Now, me personally, I prefer to only do it part time because... As I told you on previous videos, I enjoy my sticks and bricks. Now, the reason why I say that everybody needs to become a nom needs to be prepared to become a nomad is because, you know, like when you look at what happened during the recession, which was only 12 years ago, and until the end of the recession was less than 10 years ago. And then you look at this pandemic that's been going on for, at this point, close to a year. I mean, you know, during these, during these hard times, you know, a lot of times what happens is, is a lot of people lose their jobs. And if you lose your job, either A, you might find another job, but the pay is going to be much less than what your initial job may have paid. So as a result... You got a lot of people that following the loss of their job, you know, they might lose their residence due to not being able to pay their rent. So therefore, you know, people get evicted. I mean, like right now, you got people being evicted left and right, despite the protection that the CDC supposedly is giving tenants. I mean, you got landlords that are going under because they're unable to afford to maintain their property because the tenants that are in those properties are not paying rent like they're supposed to. So the money that the landlord depends on to maintain his property slash his business, he's now unable to do. So basically it puts both the tenant and the landlord in a, you know, in a hard place. And then of course, in certain parts of the country, you got, well, really probably all over the country, you got a growing number of people that are now having to resort to places like the Salvation Army and churches for their food. I mean, there's people this year that they didn't even have enough money to buy enough food to cook, Christ to cook Christmas dinner for their family, which is sad. And I'm pretty sure it was the same story for Thanksgiving too. But you got all that going on. So like right now you got, you know, you got this new influx of people that are becoming homeless and a lot of these people don't even got enough money to feed themselves. So now they're having to resort to places like churches and Salvation Armies and any other and soup kitchens. So... I mean, I mean, it's it's sad. It really is. I mean, I feel bad for these people. I really do because once upon a time, you know, during the recession, I mean, it wasn't for real long, but I was in a real similar position where I was sleeping out of, at the time, a two-door Chevy Cavalier in a truck parking lot. Like, during the day, I would get up, you know, go to the truck stop and take a shower i mean i would take like a sink shower because showers cost too much money and i had a shaver so i would clean myself up and then i would go out look for work and then at the end of the day when it was dark outside and the temperatures were cooler because this because this happened during the summer it was during the summer of 2010 when i first came here to indiana 
I mean, I would go look for work and then hang out at the library for a little bit and go on the computer for either A, to look for work or just hang out at the library just to stay out, just to stay out of the heat. And then sometimes I would go to the park just to walk and, you know, get some kind of exercise in. And then when it started getting dark, I would go back to the truck stop and get my rest. And, you know, this went on for a few months. It didn't go on for real long at all. But long enough for me to understand what's going through the minds of some of these people that are currently out here living in their cars or worse yet, living somewhere in a tent under the bridge or on a sidewalk. Now, here's the thing. Like, for those of you who are currently working and your money is decent and assuming that you're currently living in either a house or an apartment, rather you're renting or you're purchasing, if you have, let's say, two to three thousand dollars of extra money laying around, this is extra money laying around after you get done doing what you gotta do to satisfy all your financial obligations. If I were you, I would take that money and go out and purchase yourself either a larger SUV or some sort of a van. I mean, I guess if you're by yourself or if it's just you and maybe one other person, you can get away with purchasing a minivan like I did. But if you got like a bigger family, then you're going to probably want to either A, purchase yourself a full-size van, or you're going to want to purchase yourself a Class C RV. I mean, whatever vehicle you purchase, I mean, the reason why I'm not going to suggest a fifth wheel or a travel trailer or a teardrop is because whatever vehicle you choose to purchase, you, I mean, just for safety reasons and also for convenience, whatever vehicle you purchase needs to be a vehicle that you can drive. Like if you're in the back of your, let's say, RV, and you look around and you see some shitty business around your rig, you can just simply go from whatever you're doing, hurry up, get in the driver's seat, turn the key, press the gas, and you're gone. As where if you're in a travel trailer or a fifth wheel or a teardrop and you see shitty stuff going on, now you're going to have to get out of your get out of the rig and go outside so now you're going to be outside and people are going to see you you're going to possibly put yourself in danger and i mean you're going to go through all this before you get back into whatever tow vehicle that you're using but anyways if you got some extra money like you know two three plus thousand dollars go out immediately and purchase yourself either a larger SUV, some kind of van, or a Class C RV. And after you purchase this particular vehicle, like if you purchase, let's say, an RV, right after you purchase the RV, take it to your, take it to your local RV mechanic have them inspect it thoroughly. Make sure everything that's supposed to be working is working. And whenever the weather in your area is right, like if you're in a colder climate where it gets cold around this time of the year, I mean, I guess if you want to, you can always go out right now and do some practice runs, you know, test out all the equipment, uh, get yourself familiar with how to use everything. And also get yourself acclimated with the general lifestyle of a nomad. So I guess if you want to do it right now, I mean, actually, if you did, you would be more, you know, you would be that much more prepared for when times got hard. You know, you already know what you got to do. So you would just jump into action and do what you got to do to survive. And to help your family survive. Or two... You can always wait until it warms up a little bit and then go out here and, you know, drive the RV around, you know, go camping with you and go camping with you and your family. 
and learn how to use all this stuff, get familiar with how to be a nomad, you know, kind of look around and, I don't know, kind of look at the setup of other people and maybe you might get an idea off of them or whatever. Now, if you're going to go the van route, obviously you're going to have to do your own setup. So whatever equipment that you believe you will need to be at least somewhat comfortable at night when it comes to sleeping, when it comes to staying cool or staying warm, whatever equipment that you believe you will need, you know, go ahead, buy that equipment, and then set up your van to where you can live out of it. That way, when things get crazy in your hometown, like maybe crime goes up super high, or you're in a situation where you're no longer working and finding a job in your community is next to impossible. You know, if you have a vehicle of some sort that's ready to go, that you have set up to where you can live out of this vehicle for an extended period of time, all you got to do is grab some essentials, grab your family, grab yourself, grab whoever, throw the stuff in the vehicle, turn the key, press the gas, and be gone. And you can go wherever it is you need to go for work. Now, obviously, if, like right now, if you're in a, if you're in a situation where you're facing eviction, so you know eventually you're going to possibly be homeless, or you've already been evicted, so you're homeless, and you're probably... I don't know, living in the streets or living with some relatives or whatnot, and you're getting on each other's last nerve. Or maybe you're living in your vehicle already. I mean, if I were you, I would just look around and just think of some equipment that you might need to make your experience living out of a vehicle a little more comfortable, a little more bearable. I mean, I got a video that I made. I made this video two months ago, back when I was still camping out of my van in Montgomery, Alabama. The video is called My House on Wheels. So if you need an idea, if you need an example of how to set up your vehicle, assuming that you're driving a SUV or a van, go to that video, watch it from beginning to end. If you got questions, after you watch the video, uh, leave me a comment below and I will address it. And always, 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 always do not forget to subscribe to my channel because I will be putting out much, 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 much more content similar to the video that I'm making right now. And I mean, one thing which I began to think about more and more is, is you know, you got a lot of people that talk about, okay, they're going to collect, let's say, six months worth of food stored in their basement of their home or whatever. You got a lot of people that talk about, you know, they're going to go out here, make sure they got plenty of ammunition for their pistol. I mean, okay, that's cool. That's cool. Okay, I feel them. I mean, I'm an avid supporter of people having firearms. That's cool. But there's situations to where Maybe the area that you're currently living in might get so violent, might get so crime infested that no amount of prepping that you do is going to be enough to save you. I mean, sometimes the only way that you're going to be able to save yourself and save your family is to have you some sort of a setup to where basically you have a home on wheels, such as a RV or such as some kind of a van that you purchase and then you set it up to where you can live out of it for an extended period of time. Because sometimes the best way you're going to save yourself and your family is to simply, you know, grab a few essentials, secure your, if you own your home, secure your home, however fit you feel to secure your home to where people aren't going to be able to get in and take none of your stuff and strip none of your your mechanicals so however you feel fit to secure your home secure your home 
and grab a few very essentials and shove all that in, in whatever vehicle that you're going to be living out of and then leave town. And I guess go wherever it is you got to go for to survive. And obviously, if you got a little bit of money saved up beyond the money that you may need to purchase your van or RV, that would be even better. Because guess what you can do? Like, like right now, if you're in a situation where you need to escape your town because either A, it's too dangerous to, to stay, or B, there's not enough jobs to go around, so you need to go somewhere to where you can find yourself employment. I mean... One bonus about becoming a nomad is, is you don't have to stay in your hometown. Like if you're in Ohio, for an example, and you got enough money saved up for traveling, you can go to Florida and stay in Florida where obviously the weather's, the weather is going to be a lot warmer. So some of the challenges that you would have trying to stay warm at night while you're sleeping or even during the day while you're in your vehicle when you're up in Ohio, if you're in Florida, well, guess what? You no longer have to deal with those challenges. I mean, every once in a while, it might get cold in Florida, but not like it does in Ohio. So, for the most part, you're not going to have to deal with those, with those challenges near as much. Which will make your life on the road that much easier. So, that, so at that point, you can focus more of your energy on whatever work that you get. You know, get your finances straight and just, you know, just kind of weigh things out until things at home are safe again. And if at the end of winter, when it starts getting insanely hot in Florida, if things that you're if things in Ohio, for an example, are still unstable, well, guess what? You can do a little bit of research and find you a place up north that might have a stable economy. I mean, one place where I typically will go and I will do a lot of my research, such as employment opportunities, and economy will be this website called Sperling Best Places. It'll be called Sperling Best Places. So, you know, go check that website out. It's a pretty good website. I mean, I've used it several times. And and for the most part, a lot of what is on that website is fairly accurate. A lot of, most of the data on that website is accurate. I've used it several times. I mean, I mean, I, mean, I use it on a regular basis. Like, whenever I look for, for an area to move to, I'm on it. I use it. Sometimes even when I want to take a vacation somewhere and I don't know exactly where I want to go travel, I I use that type, I use that particular website. So yeah, I mean, I would say in this day and age, even though you don't want to be a nomad, even though you hate the idea of being a nomad, you hate the idea of living out of any kind of a vehicle, period. My suggestion to everybody, to every adult, is to prepare yourself to be a nomad. I mean, whether you want to be a nomad or not, prepare yourself to be a nomad anyway. And even if you're in an area or you're in a situation where times are good, everything's on the up and up, well, congratulations and I'm happy for you. And if that's the case for you, like I said a little bit ago, whatever vehicle you buy, however which way you choose to set everything up, take you and or your family on some practice runs. You know, do some practice camping. Like when the weather gets warm, do some practice camping. Even when the weather is cold, do some practice camping. Because the more you practice and the more... That, yeah, the more you practice, the better you get. The more you get acclimated with the general lifestyle of a nomad, the more comfortable you'll feel. The more you can learn how to use whatever equipment that you got, the, the better, just the better off you'll be and the more comfortable you'll be. 
And the more that you also will learn what you need, what you don't need, you'll learn the do's and the don't do's when you're on the road. You'll learn where to park, where not to park. You'll learn all that kind of stuff. And you also will learn how to sense people that aren't right versus people that are okay, I guess, normal. So yeah, get out here, you know, buy that van, you know, buy that bigger SUV, buy that RV. Now, obviously, there's going to be a bunch of you that currently do not have the funds to own multiple vehicles. You don't have the funds to go out here and buy a vehicle at this particular moment. That's okay, too. Whatever, like whatever vehicle that you're currently driving, take a real good look at that vehicle. You know, just sit down in your driver's seat and just kind of glance around a little bit. Take a real good look at the vehicle. Test out your 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 front seats to see how far they go down. Go to your back seat and see if your back seat moves forward or not. Because in a lot of your later model cars, the back seat will move forward to where you can get to the trunk without having to get out of your car. So if your, if your front seat goes down fairly low and or your back seat comes in, that's going to be a game changer when it comes to living out of your vehicle. I mean, number one, it's going to allow you to sleep a little more comfortably. Number two, it's going to give you a little extra space to store some bare essentials that you'll need when you're living out of your vehicle. So just kind of look at your vehicle. Get acclimated with all the equipment in your vehicle. Get acclimated with the seats. Make, you know, test out what seats go down and what seats don't go down or up. You know, check your trunk space, you know, make sure everything that's, you know, I mean, just get familiar with your vehicles is basically what I'm trying to say. And for those of you that are in the market to purchase a new vehicle for whatever reason, I mean, number one, I mean, I know a bunch of you are going to buy newer vehicles and you're going to be more, more than willing to make car payments, which me personally, I don't condone it. But if that's your thing, then hey, man. I mean, do what you do. However, whatever, however, if I were you, I would keep around a vehicle that you purchase and you pay cash. So whatever vehicle you're driving that you make payments on, okay, drive it, do, you know, do whatever it is you do. But also, at some point, you're going to want to buy another vehicle. I don't care if it's only a thousand dollars. You're going to want to buy a second vehicle to where you pay cash and you're going to want to make sure that vehicle is going to be big enough to where you're going to be at least somewhat comfortable at night when you try to sleep in it and also big enough to accommodate some of your bare essentials that you're going to have to carry in the car with you or truck or whatever you choose to buy so yeah whatever vehicle you choose to buy for your second vehicle pay cash and make sure it's going to be enough make sure the vehicle is going to be large enough to accommodate you in the event that you have to live out of your vehicle and the reason why i say pay cash for your second vehicle is for your backup vehicle is because if you lose your job and you're unable to afford to pay your rent because you lost your job or you had to take a significant pay cut chances are that day is going to come sooner or later to where you will no longer be able to make your car payment so if you if you get into a situation like that, you can take your car and just give the car back to the bank and then you can just drive your backup car as your primary car or whatever and live out of that. That way when you're on the road trying to survive, trying to weigh things out, you're not going to have the burden of having to worry about the bank coming and towing your vehicle away while you're, I don't know, 
parked in some Dollar General parking lot because you're in Dollar General trying to get some supplies. That's a stress that you're not going to have to deal with if your vehicle was paid off. And any vehicle that you buy, take it to your mechanic, have them check it out thoroughly. Whatever needs to be fixed, go ahead and do the repairs. And that way when you need to, you know, get up and go and and survive and go wherever it is you got to go to find work or whatever the case might be, you will be prepared to do so. You'll be prepared to do so at moment's notice. So this video is getting a little long. So hopefully you got something out of this video. Leave a comment below. Subscribe to the channel. And I'll holler at you later.